So let me talk about this Waystalker build I've been playing with. It is a little on the Mimi side. And what do I mean? I mean that it's <laughs> it's less effective than other potential builds. So, and it uses weapons that are usually considered lower tier, um, particularly dual swords. So how does the build work? How do you get enough flexibility out of it to true solo? Longbow is your armor damage and your super armor damage, as well as your boss damage. Dual swords role is to be pretty efficient against hordes, pretty solid mobility, and um, to, to get enough hits in in rapid succession because hitting enemies cools your ultimate down, so you can get your ultimate back up for mid-horde issues. So if you need to take out a one storm room in or something like this, or it's nice if you can try to sit on your ultimate during hordes in case you get an assassin or a pack master, because obviously those are the biggest dangers for solo of all possible dangers. So let's talk build. First of all, let me discuss why I'm not using parry. Um, as you guys know, I think parry is incredible. It's like get out of jail free card on so many things. So we're only giving it up because if without it, dual swords horde clear is really not that great. With it, it's pretty solid. And you can kind of, kind of make your defenses up at a 60% block cost reduction. So I'm, I think you've seen me use 60% block cost reduction a lot lately. And what it means is, as long as you are saving mobility, saving dodges for the big overhead cleaves, you will be taking much reduced stamina um, cost on all normal stuff. So this move, dodge, dodge. So you got a one big dude coming at you and a bunch of horde around it. Dodge to try to make some space, dodge to make some space. What you're doing is you're protecting your stamina and you're protecting your dodge. So you can make sure you get a dodge off on the big overhead swing, and then you can smash some stuff around the armor, and then resume again. Um, and having enough block cost reduction means you can do that pretty safely. If you ever get hit too many times at once and you get hit, you get into a little stun state and things go badly really quickly. What else? Um, crit chance, crit chance, crit chance. Crits are just really nice on longbow. It takes you to one shot body shot against storm vermin. Um, on sword, it increases your clear speed quite a bit. It's just, it's all around good. Plus you proc around, proc swift slang all the time. The way dual weapons work is you get 10% plus on light, light attack crits. So that's 10% for free. 5% as a base, so it's 15. Then five on the weapon, that's 20. Five here, 25. Five here, 30. So 30% uh, crit rate on your light attack spam, which is quite nice. It means you'll be... <laughs> You'll be plowing through hordes pretty quickly with this build. Though things can turn on a dime if you light hyperdensity built up and you fight right around it. Um, okay, what else? Let's talk about why I have Chaos Infantry, Chaos Infantry. And it's for one exact answer. It's for one-shot one shot body shotting marauders to get pace um, during Chaos areas. And so you can do push, push light attack, or heavy attack, into grouped up shield marauders, which are otherwise a big pain in the butt for this build. What else? Longbow headshots, you need them against storm vermin or you're not killing them anytime soon. So what else could you, you could have itemized towards the storm vermin breakpoint for two shot body shots, and one more infantry, uh, one more skaven would let you one shot body shot assassin. So that's what you've given up for it. Other things are arguable. Uh, let's talk about ammo sustain. Ammo and headshot here, plus ammo over time here, is enough for pretty close to infinite ammo, and you will be spamming pretty significantly against Storm Vermin, against Chaos Maulers and Chaos Marauders. So it's enough. You could argue for something else in this trait, but there's really nothing our talent yeah, trait. There's nothing else that's really important. The five percent attack speed here is not that important either. That you could take over hitting this breakpoint for the Chaos Infantry one. Anyways, it's one reasonable way to play it. Health, 20% health is non-negotiable. Boon of Shalia means you heal off a horde so fast. These are pretty much standards. For true solo, I think Grenadier is insane. So non-negotiable. The 5% movement just makes it so it's a little easier to get off a shot under pressure. That's it. Anything else to discuss on the build? The cooldown is un uh, pretty non-negotiable. Pretty non-negotiable in my opinion. 
temp health on a kill, non-negotiable. Even with the huge crit rate that we have in attack speed, this is still better. Um, because the times that this would be good is the same times that this would be good, and I find this to be more dependable. I, I actually didn't test this, though. And this might be getting close, close to the point where this is better, but I highly doubt it. I, I'm almost positive this is the case. Arcane Bodkins means you can kill Storm Chaos Warriors in six shots, which is quite nice. Um, and that's it. That's the build. That's the build. So let's talk about how it plays, because that's more interesting than just talking about stats. So I've got a video up we can watch. If it's always falling behind. Okay. So I'll talk about a couple things. I'm going to talk a bit about pace with this weapon. Yeah, so watch. One, it's two charge and a body. I mean, it's three bodies all you need. You're pretty close to, um, to the two-shot breakpoint, but you just can't hit it. You can't hit it with this character. So if you can hit the headshot, it does speed up the kill. Just light attack spam is just fine against uh, berserker types. Just going for the headshots here, because I'm killing time anyways. You could just body shot these guys. It also is a little better for the ammo sustain, obviously, because you hit those headshots to get free ammo. Troll is really weak right now. Troll's really weak because they nerfed his HP regen. Oh, another thing, shields suck against you're like you're really not very good against shields, but your ult is pretty decent against shields. So sometimes saving ult for shields is correct. Like if there was a Chaos Warrior and four shield marauders, I'd be more interested in killing the four shield marauders than the Chaos Warrior with my ult. Like threat prioritization, it's very contextual. There's a little bug with um, Troll, where if you dodge right before he attacks, he doesn't update your position. Uh, that was silly. This is my first game of the day this morning, so obviously I'm not quite here yet. I'll pick it up, though. See, your shield ult is pretty decent against shields, but you basically have to aim up against it. So if, once it clears distance, all your ults in this game, uh, um, uh, with, with Waystalker, if you want a headshot, you got to whip your mouse up so that they come in from above. What was I going to say? So if you dodge right before the troll attacks, he ignores your position update. So if you've ever noticed when troll does stupid looking things, like he stops, like, he just shoots at random things in the corner and doesn't actually try to aim at one of you, that's why. It's completely replicable. It's okay, like, doing it on purpose is good for against, for example, with Slayer. But not here, because I want a headshot. Um, some Vermintide 1 moves here. The same way you Ogre Kite by going forward to bait standing attacks, come back to make space for something range and come back again, you can do that in Vermintide 2. You can do it in Vermintide 1 too, as well against Hordes. So look, make space, bait some standing attacks. The biggest weakness of Longbow is every time you do a, a charged attack or a light attack, there's an extremely long lockout period afterwards where you can't do anything and you're stuck with slow motion. So anytime you have to use a Longbow shot, you can be pretty decently sure you're going to, against and under pressure, there's a pretty decent chance you'll take a hit. So you're basically trading HP for a range shot, so you better be sure it's worth it. But as long as you have more Horde to go with, you can heal back up. So I was sure, I was fine with trading hits there. What are you talking about? This is 1080p. What? Looks smooth here. If you could see it on my screen, I don't think it looks any grainier than the game itself, the raw recording. I do feel like when it gets uploaded to YouTube, though, it ends up looking a little grainy. So, like you're seeing here, every time I swing into density, look at my ult go up. 
Look at my ult go up. Look at my ult go up. You can watch it. You see the chunking up every time I hit into density? That's that every time you hit, you gain some cooldown mechanic. So that's why I'm saying, like, you could run Resourceful on this build, and I tried it a couple weeks ago, and I was not at all impressed. But Swift Slaying helps you with hordes, and just attacking into hordes, just cleaving into hordes also dramatically accelerates... Well, that's a stupid non-physical way to use the word accelerates, but dramatically it um, improves the rate that you get your ult back anyways. So, for example, here's a Chaos Warrior. It's to like 25, 26 damage. They have 120 HP. So it should be 5 shots. Is it 120? Yeah, it's 5. Okay, it's 5 shots. That was incorrect. Should have just body shotted there. I could have done that faster. So you can cancel um, charge attack with light attack. And you can cancel either attacks with ult. So charge attack into light attack into ult is considerably faster than, um, than you'd expect. The push stab's okay, but like all other push stabs, it leaves you extremely vulnerable during it. So I never use it under actual pressure. Uh, we'll talk more about horde maintenance up, coming up. Obviously, True Solo, the biggest threats by far are Packmaster and Assassin. As you can see, in a crit is quite nice. 50 damage. Now, if you're playing with other players that are going to be knocking these Chaos Warriors around, this is not real Chaos Warrior damage. This is garbage Chaos Warrior damage, right? Like, Slayer would absolutely laugh at this Chaos Warrior damage. Bounty Hunter would, like, wouldn't even crack a smirk. But it's doable, which is a big improvement. I'm just practicing here. Obviously, I could ult. Um, a note with two properties and damage on headshot, you have enough to one-shot Chaos Warriors. So if you're far enough away that you can shoot your ult and you pull your bow back out before it hits, you'll get the advantage of your bow property as well as your um, charm property. So you'll get one-shots like that. It's not huge. Like, it's not a big deal. I like to take this side first, kill it, and then kill the other side. You know, it's like a pincer. So if you kill this quick, but you can know the specials are about to spawn about when you're halfway done killing this or so. I mean, depending on your kill speed, obviously. So you don't want to ever get stuck in here. You want to kill this and then get out. See? Slight, there's a um, Stormer. One shot. Did you see that? Charge shot into body shots enough to insta-kill, and it's faster than charge sh than you'd think. Obviously, headshot's better, because charge shot and a light shot leaves you vulnerable longer, but you can risk it. It's worth risking it um, sometimes. That's the big deal with longbow right now. You have to know when it's worth hit trading. You have to know when it's worth hit trading. And if you're playing it, well, you're playing without, without support. When you're playing it with teammates, you just position yourself to take advantage of the space they make for you, and then you don't have to worry about any of that. So right there, I had an ult, and even though I expected more specials to come, I took care of that Storm Vermin. Why did I use my ult there? I used my ult there because trying to get a longbow shot off, clear the pressure to get a longbow shot off, would take forever, and I'd probably end up taking, if I didn't clear absolutely all of these slaves, I'd probably take a hit for 40 damage or something, and that just wasn't worth to me, because I also thought I could get my ult up pretty fast off of this horde. It also sped it up so I had time to take care of this guy and start clearing again. Like, I wanted to keep making... I wanted to keep up clear momentum, right? I wanted to keep up pace, I should say. So as you see, playing against Berserkers, by just staying out of their range, going in and baiting standing attacks, going in in between their flurries, is really not that big of a deal. I was jerking... I was, like, derping around here trying to get a headshot. I 
if they were going to get, like, a temp HP nerf, they'd have to fix Chaos Warrior running attacks, Chaos Warrior, uh, or not Chaos Warrior, Chaos running attacks, Chaos, the range of the Chaos standing attacks, like, the, just the, ver the horizontal reach of it, and they'd have to remove, I think, like, things like the, the huge period of vulnerability after you use Longbow. Or you just wouldn't be able to solo with those weapons. Hit trading is so essential. Yeah. I really don't know. I don't know if I could really do too much for graphics. So double push is enough to open up stormies, so double push into a headshot is easy. For the other stormies, you walk forward to bait a standing attack, dodge back to make space, and then headshot. So here we go. One push. Bad. That's okay. I used that there because there's a shield and the other dude. It would take it longer. That was just silly. Push, push, headshot. I rushed that shot. That. This spot's dangerous. So, okay. I don't know why I had such trouble with the Chaos Warrior earlier, but that's an important technique, a Vermintide 1 True Flight technique, which is holding your ult and scanning through the wall where you kind of expect a special to be till you get a highlight. So you can kind of wall snipe. It's super, it makes like, bring it, that's like one of the biggest things that a Waystalker can bring to a party, is the ability to deal with like area denial specials from around corners and stuff. So one of the reasons I think this build would be really good for parties, I pr I'd probably bring daggers or a glaive instead of swords though, so you're a little more flexible and can contribute more on a melee line, like a melee blend. Um, but why I think the 30% cooldown Waystalker is so good is because that ult has got so much utility for lower level parties, for who, um, for home. Area deny specials and stuff are a big threat. Like, I mean, the tankier, the more mobile, the more awareness your party has, the less the ability to snipe a special matters. But for pub carrying, this build would be very strong, I feel. But I wouldn't use swords. I'd use daggers. So unless you headshot these dudes, Longbow does really, really, really bad damage. It's like 15, which is like as much as a crit does. And again, a crit rate's 30%. If you don't headshot, it takes like I think three shots to kill those. But if you headshot, it's one shot. Yeah, see, it's like 14 damage. It's nothing. There's that crit rate though. 30% crit. It's not a joke. It turns out that quite a few weapons, um, against shield, slaves, push stab is decent to open and kill. It's not that hard to headshot um, 
rats, uh, clan rats, you aim, if you want to headshot with dual swords, you aim bottom left, bottom right, bottom left, bottom right, bottom left, bottom right. So as it sloops in like this, you headshot, 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 headshot. Uh, remind me to talk about positioning and stuff during some hordes. I keep forgetting to talk about like what I'm doing. I keep talking about the build instead. So like for example, what I'm doing here, all through here, is I'm pushing the pace. From this horde on, I'm pushing the pace. I was actually pretty surprised by how much time I had in between hordes. I expected it more. But I'm basically trying to trade ammo and a little bit of HP and try to play as tight as I can um, to make as much progress as I can in between hordes. Because in true solo, honestly, I, for me at least, I find that mentality is the um, is is the weakness. If I have to play for a long period of time, I, I tend to get stressed out and it hurts out. Like keeping focus for that long, I find difficult. So if I can push pace, it makes things a lot easier. It also, of course, the lo the faster you push pace, the less often you have to um you have to fight specials. And every assassin pack master is a potential game over state. So what am I doing here? I'm trying to snipe out these storm. Every time I see a group of elites, especially storm vermin, my line of thinking is, can I snipe these guys out? Is really, especially because if I feel like a horde's getting closer and closer, can I snipe them out before the horde gets here? Because killing them under horde is way, way harder and takes way longer, and makes killing the horde take longer because it forces repositioning and stuff. But I felt an assassin. Well, I heard, obviously, I heard the assassin. So I have to push back here. And also, by pushing back here, it gives me a chance for one or two shots for heads. I didn't use my ult because for a while I was sitting on my ult. Like against the monks and all that stuff. Because I was worried about. Um, Assassins coming at the beginning of the horde or packmasters. So right here, I dropped down because I was under pressure against those double stormies, and it was unlikely I could shake their aggro. So the way light, um, chaos storm, storm vermin and skaven are different than chaos, because for skaven all of the enemies are the same size, so they share the same slots. So if you have a, like pack, um, uh, uh, slave rats and clan rats in the front. The pack master, the pack master, the storm vermin is not going to just come through and push those other guys out of the way and come at you. With the chaos are, but that based off the geometry up there, because I was getting hyper density, I probably wasn't going to be able to shake. I was probably wasn't going to be able to shake the storm vermin, so I dropped for some space. Another cool thing about longbow is even though you fire under pressure, you have such a lockout period at the end of it, you're going to eat hits. The nice part of it is that you have no aim punch. So even if you get hit as you're aiming, you still hit what you're shooting at, unlike crossbow, for example. So I should have been able to hit that guy, but I missed. No big deal. So I have an idea. I'm going to use this little bit of verticality here, because this verticality will give me space. Then I will do a dodge. You'll see. Dodge, pull out, dodge, throw. Dodge, pull out, dodge, throw. Well, jumping and using the verticality of here and here to give myself a little bit of space against this horde to give myself space to make that move happen. I could have used a longbow there to hit it, no question, but if I wouldn't have headshot it, it would have been bad. So watch again, dodge, jump, dodge, pull out, dodge, jump, drink, watch. So dodge, jump, while pulling out, drink, and then dodge again to give space to get a heal off or a potion off if you're over, uh, when you're under pressure. It won't work against some elite running attacks if they're quite close, but it will work against trash. So yet again, my positioning's not great, but there's verticality here. So verticality means I can reposition. So I had hyperdensity going up there, but I'll drop back down, give myself space. But rather than continue to retreat, I kind of stay here. So I keep myself that box to my right as an option of where to go. I have, you have options. If you have verticality, either things you can jump up or drop down, you have op uh, space. I ended up getting a little closer to that hyperdensity than I meant to. I was willing to use my ult there, even though I wouldn't have been too surprised if special spawn here, because I figured I'd do some hit trading and I'd be hitting a lot of slave rats, so my ult would charge fast. Now it's just clean up. Um, one, two, three, block cancel, one, two, three, seems like the fastest combo. So you do one, two, three into the horde, pull back, and one, two, three forward again.
Like right there. I was trying to be goofy. I'm wondering if under those circumstances, a light attack to the body followed by a heavy attack might be the better call. So the first light attack kind of stuns them. I haven't practiced it. It could be good. You gotta be worried here. The specials can come from here, or it also can come from here or here. And when it gets here, assassins can insta pounce. So you gotta be a little worried. This room in here is outstanding. There's an easy kite path up and around here and back out the door. As long as you slow down here to make sure everything comes up and is away from the um, away from the door, and you can do the same thing on this side. You also can get up on this junk and back and over, and it is possible to get up here, but it's not as easy under pressure. And as you already saw, these stairs in the middle are quite good as well. This is a very de defensible room. Uh, I'm expecting Horde pretty soon, and there's also potential boss spawn here. So I want to clear these things as fast as possible and scout my resources. There's spawns here, potentially here, potentially here, potentially here, and potential up there. So I like to check this. You can just ping a chest to see if there's something in it. There's nothing in it. Uh, I just had to use my strength pot. I have no idea what potions to use for this build. They all seem pretty lackluster. It is possible to headshot this dude by aiming for this thing. That was a mistake. I want to talk about one move. Okay, so I hear I get an assassin call out, right? So I'm just making space. I'm trying to anticipate when, when I expect the assassin to hit. And I'm trying to make space from the boss such that when this, the assassin gets close enough, I have space. And you do that by verticality. Verticality, jumps and stuff, give you space against bosses. So now I have a moment to kill this dude and this dude. And I see the assassin. Get a nice... I think it was a headshot. It might have been crit. Charge, charge, light. will kill any of the armor guys if you absolutely need it. All right, so now I can show you what I like. They do a running attack, and now he does boop, ba doop, ba doop, jump to let myself get catapulted. Headshot, dodge that. But it's no, can't finish it now. So now I need to show you a little bit about how to play against monster plus horde. So the key is to remember that for chaos spawn, it's a bump. It's either a three or four attack running attack, and you can hear the difference in pacing. It's either a bump, a bump, a bump, a bum, or bump, bump, bum. Um, so once you get used to the pacing of his attacks, you pr identify which one by the sound pretty quick. Um, you can use the catapult. What's catapult? It's jumping and blocking versus a running attack. And you always know which attack's going to be the running attack, because every other attack's a running attack, um, to give yourself lots of space. But the key is knowing that every time you do, you bait a running attack, you come in, you smack some stuff around him, you pull back because then you're going to get a standing attack out of him, you come in and hit some trash, and then you pull out again and he'll do a running attack. And then you keep doing that. So you're basically jousting with Horde plus Monster. But at the same time, you have to be aware of what's around you, and a nice loop is quite good. And remember, if there's junk that you can jump over, um, but there's but it's junk along the side, they tend to not dense up near the side, and you can be able to jump over it and get lots of space. So this area is actually not nearly as bad as it looks. There's one path that goes through here, but it's a little risky because if you get hit at the wrong moment, you're dead. There's a path that goes up through the room I talked about by the drop down, and there's an easier path along the, the gun wall over here. So bait this. Here comes the running attack. One, two, three. Hit some stuff. Bait the standing attack. Hit some stuff. Hit some stuff. Running attack. Two, three. Kill some stuff. Standing attack. All right, got to disengage. Disengage. Now a running attack, he just did a standing attack. One, two, three, four. Hit, hit, hit. Dodge and jump. Dodge and jump. Probably anticipate another running attack because he was away from you. If you ever get away from him for a while, you can anticipate running attack. Part of the reason my screen is blurry, by the way, is I whip my mouse around all the time. If you ever wonder why... Um, 
developers always use controllers to show you their game, even if it's a mouse and keyboard game. It's, the games look smoother, and the, the bit rates and stuff benefit so much when you just are smoothly moving from side to side. I'm jerking my mouse all over the place. When there's no motion, it looks pretty tight, but as soon as you start moving, things look crappy. Unfortunate that, that my ult didn't hit him. Probably didn't mark. Let's see if I didn't mark. I heard it. I've, by the way, I was holding on my ult the whole time. I could have gotten an ult and a half off on the boss already. Yeah, see, look, because of motion. It's all messed up because my hands are going across the screen without crit stuff. So I'm aiming right in his direction, but it's not marked. So it doesn't prioritize him. So that was a mistake. That was a mistake. I should have been more focused on actually aiming at it. But again, look at all these jumping over these guns. Look how much space it's giving me. And then over this as well, it's even better. So I decided to do um, an up and down here. Trying to bait. Yep, exactly that. Trying to bait. I saw this guy and I said, hey, if I get near him, I can control exactly where the gas will go. And if I go up this choke here where there's no other options for the, ga the rats but to go right at me, they'll funnel into the choke, into the gas. Whereas if I was in the middle of the area, the gas would hit here and they'd come around me. So I got close. I closed in the distance so as to manipulate the gas rat. Okay. Still periphery. Still periphery. See that? That's the other glitch I noticed a couple... Um, I, we investigated like maybe eight weeks ago. If a di gas direct hits a boss, they just sit there in it. It's ridiculous. I've never heard anyone else report it. It doesn't... I mean, manipulating gas rest doesn't really come up in normal games. It's just not necessary. So obviously there's guaranteed ammo here. But I had just killed the boss horde, but that horde took a long time to kill. So in my head, I'm saying I don't have a long time till the next horde, and I want to make progress. I'm going to come down here and snipe all these elites out as best I can. I missed that headshot, and it makes this much worse. And I get a pack master. So as soon as specials start again... That means I can tell that the ordinary spawning cycle has started again, which usually means you don't have long until a horde, assuming that the previous cycle... I think of the game in terms of cycles. Unless you're, If you're absolutely destroying, you don't get cycles. But that was not absolutely destroying. I took hits, etc., etc., so I was expecting a real cycle. So as soon as I, I... And that last cycle was really long. It took a long time to kill that horde. So therefore, I know that the the... the so my intensity cycle took a while, so then I had my down period. Special started again, meaning I know I'm back in the high intensity part of the cycle, and I know that the horde's not long off because the, f the previous one took so darn long. So I know I don't have a lot of time to kill these two shield rats, which are pain, and plus I know I have these two specials, but I gotta think about in terms of target prioritization. Packmaster is way up here. Um, flame rats down here, and then shield rats right before a horde or right beneath it. The reason shield rats aren't higher up is because if a horde hits, I can cleave through horde, get my ult back up, and just use ults to kill the shield rats over time. Even if I don't have space to do otherwise. I'm using my stamina and my positioning to make sure I have a clean dodge against this packmaster. Then I'll worry about killing it. I decided to ult there because I didn't want to mess around. Might have been wrong. And as soon as I got knocked down here, and I see now I'm on four shield rats and a storm vermin plus the flame rat, and I know the horde's not far off, I know that things are a little a little messed up, but this is recoverable, because Skaven are so much easier than Chaos. Because um, if a horde hits, I can shake aggro on these dudes. Plus I have a ladder right here, and ladder is insane for kiting, as if you know if you've seen my motion video, my movement video. So I can wait a little bit, get around this guy, and dodge jump up here to make space, try to pick these guys off as they're climbing, because shield rats don't block as they're climbing, make the space to kill the storm, the, the fire rat. You, you see the plan evolving in my head. Dodge jump, take a little fire, who cares? The jump spot, the climb spot, I believe, is over here. I was pretty sure, so I wait for it. I camp it out. In fact, it is. 
Missed the headshot, unfortunately. Missed the headshot, unfortunately. I decided to try to use the stairs jump spot here to try to get some kills against these shield rats, and I keep messing it up. I'm not doing this correctly. This is wrong, what I'm doing. What I should be doing, I believe is make space till I can kill the one normal slave. The, this guy's got more reach and does more damage than these guys. So kill him first and then kill him. So I have three of the same type because mono enemy types is easier to deal with than multi enemy types. Then I drop down here to get all three of them next to each other. Push into them before they get a chance to attack. So they, they drop at the same time. So hesitate up here and drop. Get the three dudes next to each other. Double push to open up all three at once. Pick off one of them and repeat. That was the correct play here. And you see, I already did it. I'm trying to shoot him. I've changed my threat prioritization. Nope, I haven't. See, I'm still trying to use the jump off trick to kill these guys. This is totally wrong what I'm doing here. And I pay for it. It makes me take a long time. But I do an up hit, and look, I hit him and him. Unfortunate. But I think I'm just thinking to myself, oh wait, this is what I should be doing. Looks like trying to hit two targets is not good. And I barely beat the timer on this. If I got a little bit worse of a timer, like 15 seconds worse of a timer, that could have been a painful horde. Like, we would have got through it, but it would have been painful. So here I was trying to attack spam, trying to range spam just for the heck of it. I don't get a lot of value. The other thing is the range on dual swords is pretty low. And the you want to hit max targets to get value out of it. So you're usually playing right next to hyperdensity. Um, intentional hyperdensity, like you're trying to push and attack them right to next to each other, so every swing gets max value. So if you screw up your patterning of when you're sweeping, when you're pulling back, when you're pushing, just a little bit, you're going to end up taking like hits from six of them at the same time and almost getting one shot. It's just inevitable. But if you don't play that way, your horde clear rate goes horrible, so you have to do it. Um, I haven't really played Dwarf Ranger very much, or I think that's it. I think that's the only thing left I haven't done. Okay, so you might think that... I heard this gunner a long time ago. You might think that, oh, Jsat, use your ult against it. It's up, and there's a horde right here, and, you know, you could easily get your ult back up, and you'll be fine. But I'm thinking instead, there's easy cover over here. I'll change my positioning so it shoots over here. It'll actually help me with the horde speed. And if I can sit on my ult longer... If I just heard one special spawn, it's not unreasonable that another one will spawn, right? It means we're still in the high-intensity phase of the cycle, not the low-intensity. So during the high-intensity phase, specials can spawn. If I use my ult on this guy, I could easily ignore. And then an assassin spawns a half a second later, I'll be sad. So I decided to sit on my ult. So I bait it, hop here, and go play in this little hole right here. One, two, one, two. Now I'm taking hits because of it. I choose to take hits, but hit trading is not wrong. By jumping there, I gave myself space. I'll probably do, yep. Okay, so the other key is after you shoot, dodge right after during that, that period where you can't do anything else. It makes it a little safer. Wasn't that clean, could have headshotted, didn't matter. It really didn't matter. And by not getting too close to it and keeping side to side options, um, I, I wouldn't have been screwed even if he started firing again. It would have been fine. And remember that there's no aim punch for longbow. So even if you get hit once or twice, you can still get a stun back off. So I'm looking. I didn't fire yet because I'm looking to make sure there was no shield rats before I fired because I didn't want to learn anything. I'm okay with hit, uh, trading three shots there instead of one. It's fine. I was pretty surprised I didn't hit him there. Now, based off the fact that the intensity period just ended with the horde, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a, a period with low specials. So I was okay with using my ult there. But it's it's kind of late. It's kind of late. It would not be... Un it. If I see a Chaos Warrior right when I get around the corner, or if I get early special spawns, I'm going to be unhappy that I use my ult there. But I wanted to use it for pace, because I wanted to make progress. I want to clear this next... I'm thinking to myself, I, ha I just went through a busy period. 
I got a low period, right? A light period. I want to get forward and I want to clear this area out before the next busy period. And if I get around the corner and there's seven elites over here, I'm going to need all of that time. So I use that ult for pace. And that's the other reason I bring Swift Slang so often now. Not because it's better for like in a vacuum. It's not better for um it's not better for groups or something, but because I need the pace so I have time so I can clear the next difficult area out to make space. Uh, another little thing is trying to intentionally line up shots for two for ones. I'm finding push stabs okay. One more hit. Now, it was only one more hit, so why didn't I push forward, hit him? Wait for it. So, one attack from Chaos Warrior, push around him, kill this clan rat, wait one more attack from clan War Chaos Warrior, and hit him. It would have taken two full attack cycles from the Chaos Warrior. And I'm really feeling time. I'm really feeling time right now. But if I get an assassin right now, again, maybe I'm sad. So, using that ult there might have been wrong. I don't know. It, it was pretty tight, right? Like, it's, it's like a 55-45 decision one way or the other, and I don't actually know quite which way is 55. Facing this chaos where you're here, it, it likes it somewhat likely that maybe it was wrong. But I almost have another one, right? And if I'm really lucky, I'll kill him, and I'll push my luck, and I'll go kill this other set right here. So the conservative play right now is to pull back. The horde's really close. It's no more than 35 seconds from here, maybe 40. I know there's a Chaos Warrior, four Shield Rats, and a Mauler up or field short Shield Marauders, and a Mauler up here at minimum. It is possible to kill them before the Horde hits, but what I'm about to do is greedy, and it's probably unnecessary, but this is what I was talking about earlier. My biggest enemy I've noticed in runs lately is staying chill. If I'm staying chill, if I'm staying happy, I'm, I'm winning a lot more, and if I'm pushing the pace, I'm having an easier time to stay that way. So even though if I was a computer, the correct move there was to wait, I'm noticing that if I'm playing faster and looser to a degree, my win rate's been going up a lot. Playing defensive, I get myself tense. It's actually a psychological decision as opposed to um, a mechanics decision. If I was a robot, the correct decision is to not go. So I pick him off, and I make sure I switch to my bow, make sure I get my double property so I have just enough to kill him in one shot. It might have been correct to save my ult for the shields instead. But I felt like since there's a drop down right here, I might be able to open them up by a drop down instead, and that'll be okay. So my next big threat priority is the Mauler. Is there a Mauler here? Am I crazy? I thought there's a guaranteed Mauler here. Okay, I'm wrong. And that's this is the first time in the run. I haven't played this build that many times. This is the first time I finally occurred to me that double pushing these dudes under the ground into longbow shots a good play. That, this was my actual plan, but didn't end up occurring. So I pull back here because it's possible to get a horde from the front and the back, and getting trapped is garbage if an assassin comes, because specials can come right down here, and you get really screwed. So, But I decide to kind of stay here in this tight area, because if I get hyperdensity, I get way more value out of my longbow and out of my dual swords for killing speed. So I'm going to stay here as long as I can, but the second I feel pressure, like stuff coming here or here, I'm retreating out into the field for space. That's my plan. The slightly risk, less risk-averse or the risk averse play is to go down now, but if you retreat to your space early, it means you don't have that space when you need it. So playing aggressively and then with a backup plan if you need it typically is the best way to go. You can actually farm ammo with longbow on linear hordes. See, look at this hyperdensity I'm intentionally playing into. I position myself here. I know there's a waiting pool. If you watch my video on hyperdensity, you understand what I'm talking about on the slot system. I know there's a waiting pool right behind me and to my side and stuff, and many of these units are assigned to run behind me. They'll get right to my face and stay there. I sit here because I want hyperdensity. If I didn't want hyperdensity, I'd sit in the corner. Switching to health pot would have been correct there. That is correct. With Boon of Shalia, pot will almost full heal you anyways. And it's much, much, much easier with a career like this to get it off under threat. For high HP. See? 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 
That's the trade-off for playing into hyper density. I slightly lost control. So I've got my dodge dance. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's a, it's actually like a sideways joust, right? So I'm coming in to forward to left, pull it back, forward left, pull back, forward left, pull back. And then I felt the pressure push me back. It was too much. And so now I switched to here to joust. One, two, three, into the joust. And now I slightly lost control. Look at this. I, bo I bounced them up so much. The correct move there was to push after that one, two, three. And now I can regain control, but it's too much. Now look, assassin, it's, I have so much space to retreat to. If he comes from here or from right behind me, he'll probably do a long leap and I'll be able to ult him out of the air. But if I had a draft right now, I'd probably drink it. And I'm it's kind of unfortunate I didn't switch. Because that way, when I go to do this, if I take any hits afterwards, I just don't get insta-gibbed. So I have a little low on HP, which means I have to be a little careful in how I handle this. I will not use my longbow because trying to shoot and I'm going to get hit by all these dudes after. Uh, I could have gone right here, so I have a decision to make. The faster I run back, the more space I have against the dudes in front of me, the more space I have to get the shot off on the assassin. However, if I rush back really fast, eventually I'm going to run out of space to run, right? But if I dally over here by the wall, it means I use up my space slower. But if the dude appears, I'm closer, which means I have less reaction time, right? And they're closer to me, which means I have more sp less space. So I decide to use up my space pretty quick to make space to this, um, um, uh, to make get enough distance from this area up here. So if Assassin leaps, I have time to react. But now I'm going to try to slow down a little bit, I think. Okay, you got, nope, there he is. And there it is. And you saw how close it was to eating running attacks. I had to switch into block immediately. And the block cost reduction helped there. I used one and a half of my shields. I have three shields. I used one and a half of them. Without my 60% block cost reduction, that easily could have been all of my shields. And then one more hit, and I would have been stunned, and it would have been worse for me. There's block cost reduction mattering. And now I have a pack master. That's okay. I just want to hear where he is, and then I can make a decision. So that move was slightly risky, but how did I do it? Let me explain. This is the same exact move I used to get a draft off or a potion off. So what do you do? You push forward into them to bait standing attacks. And then sometimes you actually literally use push as well. Then you pull back with a dodge while pulling it out and then jump. So dodge, jump backwards, and then use it. Boom, dodge again. forward to bait the standing attacks in a jousty like way backwards while pulling out dodge jump okay so this run's basically over do you guys want me to talk about the, old, the finale or are we good The only important thing here is sitting on your ultimate as much as possible, right? If, if, you, if you don't use your ultimate, the only time I really use my ultimate is, I like to say my ultimate for, I mean, there's, it's very complicated, right? There's a lot of decision-making rules that go into when you use your ultimate. But when there's a potential Packmaster or Assassin spawn, I really like to sit on it. The times I'm going to use my ultimate other than that is when I don't use it, it's going to put me in a bad position. Or, And one of the biggest reasons for that is, like, let's say there's some elites or some shield users that I have a hard time taking care of. But if I have to take care of them the old-fashioned way, other stuff's going to build up. And if I kill those things, if I remove that small obstacle, that significant obstacle, I can go back to being more efficient against everything else, and I can keep the overall number of level, like enemies down. So in that case, what I'm basically saying is, killing these guys efficiently will allow me to kill those guys efficiently, which will prevent a buildup of intensity, such that, and that buildup of intensity would be such that it would be at a significant pressure, such that if a Packmaster Assassin spawns with that additional pressure that I didn't take care of, it would be more dangerous than that pressure and that special 
plus me having my ultimate, if that makes sense. So I've got two cases. One is I use my ult, and I kill all the stuff, and I remove the pressure before it builds up too much, such that if an assassin or packmaster spawns, I don't have a ton of pressure plus the grabber. And i got to compare that versus pressure plus grabber. Um, so the question JLB is asking, would I consider block cost reduction for ordinary play? Well, the thing is, this is how I conceptualize it. So like right there, was that worth? I've got double, I've got double storm vermin to take care of. And if I don't just eliminate either the storm vermin or the specials right away, I'm going to have to kite out, which is going to slow things down. <laughs> it's tight. So I think parry is insane. So by killing the special, I can... By the way, look at the way I handle the Storm Vrim and plus Horde. Notice it's very similar to the way I handle um, the monster plus Horde. Go forward, bait the standing attack, back off, come forward and kill the little things around him, repeat. Jousting. Jousting is the key. Okay, so I think parry is incredible, and if you're using parry, block cost reduction in addition to parry, not not hugely important. Um, so for example, my ult's up again. So if you're going to bring parry, it's probably worth those other traits, but if you build... If the weapon you're using really, really, really benefits from 20% attack speed, like, it just does not feel good versus multiple elites otherwise. And the weapon I'm thinking here more than any other is Flail. Flail feels so bad without the crit slip slaying. And one-handed axe, both of these on Zealot. And Zealot has so many other maneuverability options and such that you're going to really want swift slaying, and it's going to be okay. I would consider block cost reduction there. But then again, Zealot's so tanky, you probably won't get punished. See that? See that? See the double push into just clean up with Longbow. It's sick. And that's why 20% Chaos, 20% Infantry is quite good on this build. So on more meta weapons that are excellent, have great mobility, have great killing power already. By the way, right there, I should have dodged slightly sooner, but I expected to take a hit or two, and I was totally fine with it. There were multiple units targeting me, so the per unit damage would not have been insane, and I had tons and tons of um, uh, horde to make it up on in just a moment. I, I wasn't worried about it. So right there again, the decision making I'm making is there's so many special elites that if I don't ult there, it's going to take forever. The correct move there is just double push. By doing a drop there, waiting for the, gun, the fire rat to come up, then dropping, you get insane space against a special. Literally, that single packmaster is more dangerous than every other thing we've seen so far. Little drop, jump, up and downs are so good against shields. So, I guess when I was talking with Grim, if you guys were watching that, we were talking about how amazing parry is and such. It is. It's extremely good with clutch ability. But if you're trying to make weapons work that are a little bit less than meta, or salt spire, because <laughs> none of salt spire weapons are really all that amazing. Um, in terms of overall killing speed. I can easily see trying to bring some slaying and trying to use maneuverability, your teammates, etc. Or just sacrificing clutch. Sacrificing clutch ability. It might be right to sacrifice clutch ability, right? Depending on the context. This is double or triple Packmaster. So I dropped here because of where I heard him, 
And I knew if I came down here and back up here, I'd corral all of these to come from one direction. I linearize the fight. All of the threats are coming from basically the same place, which means it's much easier to focus on them mentally, right? I'm, the amount of mental loops I need to keep track of everything right now behind me here and here and time in my head when the things are gonna, threats are going to come and such is hard. But I do this little move. And now suddenly everything is on the same side, and it's much easier to figure out what's going on. Anyways, this is obviously over. Little dodge jump. You can catapult off Flame Rat, by the way, as well as bosses. Was that door part of Boner's plan? I don't know about. So Dubin is saying that with Swift Slaying on Flail you actually get enough control out of your attack that you don't need to control, like, you don't need parry anymore. You can try to be aggressive and use aggression to be the solution as opposed to solid defense. And I think that's reasonable. I think that's very reasonable, and I respect that more now um, that I've been playing crappier weapons. But if you're obviously if you're using a range oriented build, I could never ever ever see that that justification. Anyways, enough. So that's the hand the the handmaid and the waystalker longbow dual sword build with some obviously a, a pretty long run to talk about. Any other questions? And the other thing Dubin's correct uh, to th talk about is parry or any sort of blocking power synergizes amazingly with dodge power to make yourself like so hard to kill. Go to bed early asked, does the ending battle always last the same amount of time? No. There is a wave system in most events in Vermintide, if not all, such that there's a fixed number of waves or it's like there's three to four waves and it picks some number. I, I'm not sure if it's fi utterly fixed or if it's got a small variance. But it won't send in the next wave until one, a lot of time has passed since the previous wave, or two, the current wave is almost dead. So if you kill the waves really fast, the next waves come faster, etc. There were some events in Vermintide 1, for example, that had an unlimited number of waves. So it, it is possible that there's unlimited waves in Vermintide 2. I, I can't think of it right now. Anything else? Is it still the case where long, longbow light attacks do more damage um, light attacks than the charge attack? That is a good question to which I do not know the answer. So we can check that real quick for completeness. So, yes, Diddy, I would say that Falchion is most popular. I'll be damned. It is still the case. That's a bug. I'll be damned. Good catch. Hmm. Anything else? All right, let's end it. All right.